You're right guys, nice simple one again. A few ingredients. Digwell's pumpkin bread rollovers. Pumpkin puree, flour, cream cheese, spring onions and yeast. <laughs> Okay then, if you want to save a bit of time, you can do the onion and cheese mix during the actual bread making. I just did it first to get the chopping board out of the way. Uh, spring onions, half a dozen spring onions. Really finely chopped if you can. Uh, if you like a lumpy bread, then a few lumps don't matter. Soft cheese, I use Philadelphia full fat for this. You could use reduced fat and there are plenty of supermarket cheeses that will substitute for this just as well plenty of them the breton um, french salt cheese is nice as well give it a good mix in and uh, set it to one side get the pumpkin puree into your bowl like I've said before, plenty of ways to make pumpkin puree, roast it, steam it, boil it. If it feels a bit um, dry, if you like, uh, wet it down a bit with a bit of water, give it a mix in. It just helps a go. When you're happy with the mix, in with the yeast. I just use quick acting dried yeast for this. Give it a good stir in. And then in with the flour. No finesse with this one, just chuck it straight in. Give it a good mix in, it takes a while, you think nothing's happening. And gradually gets stickier, a little bit stickier. Drag the flour from the outside and all of a sudden you'll have a crumbly shaggy dough. A bit like this. Get it off the fork, get your fingers in there and form it into a ball like with any bread making process the first resting period is all about getting the flour hydrated so like I say just form it into a ball and we'll cover it and leave it for 15 minutes room temperature will do for this one okay then quarter of an hour is gone get the dough out onto it now I'm using a silicon mat for this now I'm wondering why I ever bought this mat. The idea of a silicon is that nothing sticks to it. And here we go, the dough's lifting the mat, it's making it all... And I've got to use flour anyway, so why bother with a silicon mat in the first place? The answer to that question today is because it's protecting the Lego underneath. And you'll find out why in a day or two. Push and pull, uh, knead the dough, push and pull, push and pull, two or three minutes. Knead the dough however you want, I like it this way. Push and pull, push and pull. Gets the gluten forming, gets it a bit stringy. Only a few minutes for this one, nothing fancy. Marvellous stuff dough. One minute it's all horrible sticky, you can't touch it with your fingers and next thing you know it's a, a nice pliable ball like this. Anyway, back in the bowl, cover it and let it uh, rest and rise for 30-45 minutes. We're not after any fancy numbers here, no doubling in size, we just want the dough to grow a little bit. Get some more flour on your work surface. And we're going to push it and coax it and uh, whatever <laughs> to make the dough into a rectangle. Start off with your fingers, just knocking a bit of the gas out as well doing this. And then with the rolling pin. Keep rolling. And I think mine was about five millimetres, just under a quarter of an inch thick at the end. Bloody mat sticking again, look.
Right then, however you've done it, you've teased your dough into a big rectangle. So it's time to spread on the cheese and onion mix. Dollop it on and spread it all over, but leave an inch or 25 millimetres clear at the bottom. We're going to use that to glue it all together. And then we just roll it up as tight as you like. All the way to the bottom and this is where we stop at the, uh, the lip. Give it a good wetting. And carry on rolling to stick it together. Give the log a good dusting of flour, makes it easier to handle. And then cut it into about 40 millimeter slices. Give them a little podging to make them circular again and uh, let them rest for 30 minutes under cover. Right then. Uh, 30 minutes later they look something like this. Time to get your steamer ready. I use my uh, Morphe Richards and Telesteam, fantastic bit of kit. If you do a lot of steaming, this is the machine for you, I tell you. But whether you use a colander over a boiling pan or a classic bamboo steamer, you need to line it with baking parchment or greaseproof paper. Put your slices in, end up, or is it end down? <laughs> and uh, steam for about 12 minutes. What I like about this new Morphe Richards Intellisteam is it's got glass lids. My old one had solid lids, you couldn't see what was going on. And here, as if by magic, you can see the slices expanding. Ah, 12 minutes is up. Get them out onto a tray. And then while they're still warm, straight into a frying pan. Good drizzle of olive oil, maybe a tablespoon, maybe two. <laughs> and just fry each side, two to three minutes for their golden brown. I did mine in two batches. If you had a bigger pan, you could do it in one go. Here we go then, and it's just about time for a taste test, I reckon. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, you'll do. Well, this is the first for me. I think that's going to be quite warm. Mmm. Yeah, that's right. Mmm. Mmm. Soft bread in the middle, crispy bread on the outside. Certainly got the spring onions and the cheese. Maybe a little bit of pepper. Maybe. Maybe it's tried with pepper.
or even a few chili flakes. Yeah, I'm liking that. Mmm. Very good. See the bread's come up alright then. Hard to show you there though. 